This is CBS 2 News at 11. And there is breaking news at 11, a flood emergency in New York City for the first time in history. Right now, a dangerous struggle for drivers as for on the FDR, one of many streets in our area underwater. Also tonight, Governor Murphy issuing a state of emergency in New Jersey because of dangerous conditions statewide. And the MTA telling commuters to stay away from the subway as some stations are underwater as we speak. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christine Johnson. And I'm Maurice Dubois. Also right now, a tornado warning in effect for parts of Suffolk County. We have team coverage for you, this wrath of Ida. Let's get right to Lonnie Quinn with the latest right now on the dangerous situation right now on the island and across the area. Lonnie. All right, well, I want to start with the toughest weather of all. And granted, it's all over the place, but we do have a tornado warning north shore of Suffolk County. It's basically going from... Oyster Bay out to Miller Place. That's until 11:15. Remember, tornado warnings are short-lived. You're dealing with it right now. We detect rotation, a twist in the atmosphere. Is it going to set down? Well, again, wherever you see that blue color, that's really violent weather. That's the heaviest pre precipitation you're going to see. We've had rain falling at 3.2 inches per hour. It is being pushed off to the east. The threat for Huntington around 11:06. For Melville, could be into your area at 11:13. Northport, 11:15. Uh, also, Comac around 11:20. I don't want to let this shoreline of Connecticut out of this picture as well because you're catching some of your heaviest rain and stormy activity right now. Uh, the volatility is pushing again off to the east northeast so that could get to Stanford around 1110. Don't get me wrong here. Stanford you're in the midst of it right now. It ramps itself up by the time you get to about north. Excuse me. Wait. Excuse me. One second here. What George is doing right here. I didn't pick up on this. He's tracking now the tail end of the heaviest activity. So Stanford you are catching it right now. Those numbers he gave you for when things start to calm down. So here's your picture. All right. It's widespread all throughout the area. The tail end, which is way down there, all right, by the very southern tip of New Jersey going into Delaware, that is going to be making its push through the New York City area at around 2.20 in the morning. What does that tell you? That tells you when things start to calm down. Until then, it's 11.03 right now. We're going until 2.20 in the morning. And the rainfall rates have been off the charts. Look at the numbers. I mean, all of these numbers are big. John Elliott can talk to you more about the numbers and what is to come. So, John, you're in, uh, you're in New Jersey right now. You've been in Middlesex County through some of the worst of it. How are you doing right now? Is it, is it maybe not as bad or is the rain still coming down? Horrible. It's getting worse. I just want to show you first off Don and Greg. Thank you for your hard work. I was standing on dry ground 20 minutes ago so you can see what the inundation is like over my shoulder. This is about a 2017 Volkswagen Jetta. Uh, she just drove in there. The water went in. She blew the starter. That car now has got water in the passenger cabin. So my concern is that car is likely total. We're actually doing a public service here by blocking this road. This is River in Lincoln here in Middlesex. The river, the uh, uh, Raritan River is on the other side. <laughs> and that's why Raritan River is maybe at 20 feet now, but it's rising rapidly. I wanted to show you some video that Greg captured earlier. And it was the authorities, uh, the uh, highway guys, shutting down this road and now we had to move twice to get away from this. Don has got a picture of where that gate is right now and you can see it is totally inundated. That is the Raritan River so that obviously that gate you can't see that gate in all of the pylons all of the uh, anything they've tried to stop people from driving through this intersection that's totally flooded and uh, just as talking to a guy Gene Scully now uh, there's a guy burning his car out right there. I mean, this is insane. People are driving through this, and then they wonder when they blow their starters out. So now this is, you can't even see it. You don't want to know. You know what? Don't go. We're under a flood warning. Don't go. And the problem with this is that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be uh, dealing with this uh, through uh, tomorrow because we won't hit flood stage until early in the morning. Watching rivers rise, so uh, Lonnie, I got to send it back to you and because uh, we got to get this truck out of here. Please stay safe and don't don't go if you uh, if you don't have to go. Yeah, sorry, Maurice and Christine, we got to we got to get the truck out of here. Yeah, you it's do rising that, fast, very yep. dangerous. Absolutely. Back to you. Absolutely. All right, John. You guys, great work. Stay safe. Right here in the city, some of the roads also look like rivers. Subway stations are being flooded as we speak. CBS 2's Corey James live at the Woodhaven Boulevard subway station in Queens. Corey, what are things looking like right now? 
Yeah, not good, Maurice and Christine. We're on the MNR platform to Forest Hills. I want to show you this right now. Look at this track. This is the first one closest to the platform here. You can see the water is moving. It was actually moving a little bit faster not too long ago, but if we actually pan off and move a little bit closer to some of the other tracks, you can see more flooding here at this subway station. This is one reason why the MTA is just telling people to not take public transit at this time. Take a look at this video, though. Watch this water gushing into the 28th Street subway station station not too long ago this evening. You can see it quickly spreading as the powerful storm pounds this area and then check out this video. This is video on an MTA bus that at one point appears to get stuck in floodwaters. Passengers were standing on top of their seats because of water entering the bus and then covering the entire floor. Eventually, that bus driver was able to move through those floodwaters there, but the MTA putting out this tweet to riders saying, at this time, there is very limited train service. Do not travel on the subways. And back here live, you can see this platform here at the Woodhaven Boulevard uh, subway station. No one in sight here. If we actually pan off to some of the trains, too, you can see no one there as well. And as we were driving to the station, a number of people seem to be taking ride shares and taxis. We we saw a lot of those vehicles, so clearly folks are trying to take heed to what the MTA is saying. Uh, but at this point, as you can see, the floodwaters are moving in, at least at this subway station. You've seen it at a number of other subway stations. We, of course, will continue to follow all of this and bring you the very latest. For now, we're live here at the Woodhaven Boulevard subway station in Queens. Corey James, CBS 2 News. Okay, Corey, thank you. Well, from the subways now to the roads where those downpours are catching many drivers off guard. CBS 2's Ali Bauman has been moving about in Mobile 2 tonight, checking on road conditions. We saw some extraordinary scenes in Harlem, Allie. What do you have? That's right, Maurice and Christine. We had to stop when we got to the scene in Harlem a, a few minutes ago because we, we could not go any further, even in Mobile 2, which we're driving in right now. I want to show you the scene here right in front of me. Uh, West 125th Street and Amsterdam and Harlem. At least at least seven cars that I can see stuck in this intersection, in this flood water, including one taxi cab here. I mean, the, the intersection is flooded. The uh, parking lot that's nearby is flooded. Y you can see trucks are trying to go through it, but it's a poor decision because of what you're seeing right in front of me. I mean, we've been driving around the city all night and conditions like these, like this are all over the place. And the FDR, there were cars driving through heavy, heavy floodwaters on the FDR right now and earlier. We were driving on uh, the west side for, for a lot of tonight and a lot of flooding leading onto 10th Avenue, leading onto the, the west side, that river, uh, the, the Hudson River there. I mean, just dangerous conditions everywhere you go. It, I've, I've never driven in anything like it before. I mean, because of how heavy the rain is coming down and how, how strong the winds are, I mean, your windshields cannot keep up with it. It is not a good idea to be on these roads tonight, no matter where you're trying to go. And we did also, I, I heard Corey talking about an MTA bus driving. We did see a short time ago an MTA bus uh, passing through this intersection here. Again, not advised if you are driving and you see flood, flooding of any kind, do not go through it because of things like this. We Back here in Harlem, we talked to the, uh, the taxi driver whose taxi is stuck here a short time ago, um, and, and here's what he said. What happened, sir? Uh, the, the guy on the turn, actually, this way. Then he turned this way, and I stopped there. Um, how did you get out? Water. 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 When the taxi, the water coming, then I can't get out. Uh, you obviously didn't realize how, how deep it was? Coming. And again, that taxi driver is still waiting here, waiting for help. He, he had called police. We ourselves called police to try to help, and we haven't seen any police or, or fire trucks here yet, but hopefully they're they're on their way. And again, you have see cars trying to make through. Again, folks, not a good idea. Don't try to, to drive through stuff like that because that car thankfully was able to make it through, but you have at least seven and counting still uh, still here in the flood water. So for now, we're live in Harlem. Allie Bauman, CBS 2 News. Hey, Allie, if we just hold that picture for two seconds here, this is not a road with a lot of undulations. This is a basically flat road, 125th Street in Harlem. Mm -hmm. I have a couple inclines here and there, but the rain coming down at 3.1 inches in an hour. This is the result. The water just has nowhere to go. Exactly. It's it's a flat. You know, it's a relatively flat road. It's definitely not that hilly. Um, and the the floodwaters are are just keep rising. We've we've had to move this truck back even because it's just you know the flood is just growing.
Okay, Allie, you guys stay safe. That's an absolutely incredible picture right there. Thank you so much. And we are seeing a lot of flooding and videos posted to social media tonight. And they are stunning. CBS 2's Dick Brennan in our newsroom with a look at what people are posting here this evening. Dick? Stunning might be an understatement all across the tri-state area. We're seeing spots that rarely, if ever, have seen this kind of flooding. Let's take a look at some of them. You won't believe it. Uh, first of all, look at this. Inside a home in Montclair, New Jersey, floodwaters pouring through the windows, absolutely gushing, and there's nothing to stop it. And the speed of the floodwaters will probably continue as the rains come down, and maybe not until they stop. Will they stop? And this is what it looks like on the streets in Newark. And Allie was showing you the cars before, but it's happening all over, folks. Don't try to go through these floods. This is Hamilton Street in New Jersey Railroad Avenue. You can see two vehicles going nowhere, likelihood totally swamped. And if you try to go out and walk, it doesn't get much better. So you got to be really careful. Stay inside, clearly, more than a few feet of water. And uh, check out Newark Airport. You ever see this before? Uh, the airport, uh, one person who took these pictures said, this is unreal. Flooding inside the terminal. The escalator will take you to the water. Certainly a difficult spot to be in if you were waiting for someone who will likely be delayed. And by the way, all flights are on hold. Newark, LaGuardia, and Kennedy airports. And another basement to look out. And uh, what a disaster. In, in Hoboken, it's on Bloomfield Street. The person who took this video said, it's the worst I've ever seen. Obviously, you can see why. Water, water everywhere. And um, an apartment in Williamsburg, this is, look at this. It looks like a scene out of the Titanic, practically. Look at the power of the water powering through that apartment, a flood of water, and once again, nothing to stop it. Scenes like these all over the tri-state area. We can tell you, it's been a rough night. It continues to be a rough night. Be safe as best you can. Guys, back to you. All right, Dick, it really is stunning to see all of this. It, 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 as we were talking about, it's such a helpless feeling for right. everyone here in the tri-state area mm -hmm. because we have had um, three three episodes of this major rain that that Lonnie has been talking about. Our ground is saturated. There's nowhere for this water to go and for it to be falling this quickly for so many hours here this evening. We're going to be in for this um, for the long haul throughout the evening and into tomorrow and the next day. We're seeing damage even in northern New Jersey. That's right. All over the place as Dick was saying and let's get to Jessica Layton. She's on the ground right now. It's been coming down and continues to in that neighborhood there in Ridgewood. Jessica, what do you have? You know, Maurice and Christine, I've covered a lot of severe storms, several hurricanes, in fact, and it has been years since I experienced such a soaking, relentless rain like we're experiencing here tonight in Bergen County. And the rain is freezing cold. It's still summer and the rain is cold. Teeth have been chattering out here. So the conditions are just absolutely miserable, as all of our reporters have been telling you tonight. I just want to kind of give you a snapshot of where we are right now. This is Upper Boulevard in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And scenes like this are just all across the area. Uh, behind me, you can see a tree came down. It made this road impassable about an hour and a half ago. Wires, branches came clear across. Way back in the distance, really hard to see because most of this area is without power right now. It snapped that pole. You've got wires dangling from the top of that pole like earrings. And then more wires just coming clear across this whole part of the street. So we can hear the generators buzzing right now, but some people don't have generators and their homes are completely in the dark. And in these miserable conditions tonight, you really had to feel for the guys who were out here about an hour and a half ago trying to clean this thing up. They had their wood chippers going. They were really, really working hard to make this road passable once again. PSENG was also here because of the concerns with the power and making sure that these wires were no longer live. And this is really true to what we've been seeing across Bergen County tonight. As you mentioned, the ground so saturated from this storm, from Henri a little over a week ago, that these trees are just easily just coming out of the ground tonight. Also flooding a major concern, and we have some video of that to show you. We're not just talking about flash flooding on residential side streets, although we did see a lot of that tonight. Major thoroughfares were closed down in parts tonight, including Route 78, Route 22, Route 3, 
all because of flooding. Several drivers trapped. I know John Elliott showed you that a couple of minutes ago, but in Kenilworth, right under an overpass for the parkway, we saw rescues going on. We saw rescues going on in Newark tonight. Again, guys, we can't stress this enough. When you see standing water, do not drive in it. You have to assume that you're going to get stuck. And then back here live in Ridgewood with all of these wires still down. Yes, PSE and G was here and they turned them off and they took care of it. But there's going to be a lot more wires coming down tonight. So never try to drive over them. Call 911 if you see one. Christine Maurice, back to you. All right, Jessica, thank you. And just to reiterate, Governor Murphy did declare a state of emergency. Um, I spoke to some of his people on the phone tonight. He will not be giving a comment here this evening as of now um, because he's working the phones. Uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from him uh, early tomorrow morning.